Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for part two of our Cessna Longitude tutorial series. So if you want to know more about Auto Throttle and VNAV, then I think you should stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. Hey everyone, and while we're taxiing down to runway three, if this is your first time joining us on the channel, I'd love to welcome you. Don't forget to go down below and hit that subscribe and tick that little bell. You don't want to miss any future videos just like this one. Hey, and if this video does help you out today, smashing that thumbs up button is greatly appreciated and helps us get found by viewers like you. So if anybody missed our first episode of the Cessna Longitude of how we entered all the information for our VNAV as well as setting up our autopilot, I'll post a link down below in the description as well as you can click the link here at the top of the screen. Flight 209, -er, you are cleared for takeoff. Roger. Huh? LA departure frequency 123.9. -er. Roger. Huh? If anybody has any questions along the way today, please go ahead and post those down in the comments section and I will get back to you ASAP. All right, so we're just gonna go over a couple things real quick before we go up. We have us set in the heading mode and as you can see right here, we are pretty much on the ball with the heading. I'm just going to adjust that just slightly. Next, uh, we're going to make sure that we have our vertical speed set, which we do. We have our altitude set, which we do. The barrel is set, and our minimums for the arrival airport is in the computer. Next, I am going to set up our speed for the auto throttle. So you want to make sure that you come up here and turn that into the manual position so that you can adjust your speed knob here. And then you're gonna just turn that to the speed that you wanna be at, and we're gonna set that for 250 knots for right now. All right, the next thing we wanna do is to make sure that we have our flaps in the correct position, and now we do. So it looks like we are ready to go. Speed brakes are off. Let's kick the tires and light the fires, Big Daddy. Flight 209 are clear for Vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Vector? Our radio clearance, over. That's Clarence, over. Over. Roger. Huh? Roger, over. Huh? Huh? Over. Who? Over. Positive rate gear is up. So let's make our left turn so that we can intercept our course. Flaps are up. into autopilot mode so we're just going to tap on the autopilot button right there we're also going to tap on the nav button now looks like we got a little bit of ice building up here so we're going to come down here and just make sure that we turn our wing ice and the left and right engine anti-ice on So now that we're, because we're using vertical speed and not flight level change, we can now engage the auto throttle. Again, to do that, you come right down here and hit the little button on the side of the throttles. And when you do that, notice how the throttles just moved because now they're going to try to get to 250 knots. 
Now, if we come down here to our MFD screen, you can see at our curtain ascent rate, we will be at 27, 27,000 feet by about the time we reach the MANCA waypoint. Also, you can check out here the active flight plan menu has now populated some information in as well. All right, so we're just going to keep ascending at 250 knots right now, all the way up to 27,000 feet. Now, once we get up there and start the VNAV procedures, then we'll come back at you and show you how we get that taken care of. So now that we are at our cruising altitude of 27,000 feet, there's a couple things now that we have to take care of in the GPS just to prepare us for the arrival into Denver International. So the first thing that we need to do is set up our ILS frequency in our NAV-1 radio. Now to do that, all you need to do is come right over here to the flight plan, and if you scroll down, all the way down to our arrival airport and tap on that you can see right over here it gives you a waypoint information button if you tap on that information button it will give you a lot of information about that airport the different runways but the biggest thing that we want to know is the ILS frequency so we come over here to frequencies tap on that you can scroll all the way down until you get to ILS 34 left now if you just tap on that you can either activate that or put that in your standby in either your NAV1 or NAV2. We're just going to put that in our active NAV1 frequency. So now we have already set up our NAV frequencies. Now you can also get to that same menu from this screen right here. Click on the waypoint information and airport information and that will give you the exact same information. Pretty cool, huh? And as you can see, we are just approaching the HAVWU waypoint, and we're gonna be jumping on that new airway all the way up into that VOR. So now that you guys got the basic idea of how all this is gonna work, and you've got your ILS frequencies, we're pretty much set up now for our approach. So I'll come back at you once we pass the SHNPS waypoint, and we're gonna start our step-down procedure using the VNAV. All right, so we are just passing the SHNPS waypoint, and if we take a look down here at the active flight plan now, you can see some more information is now populating. Over here on the right-hand side for the current VNAV profile, we can see that our time to top of descent is just about nine minutes. It's gonna to try to keep us on a three-degree profile, and our target vertical speed is 2454 feet per minute. Okay, so now let's take a look at the PFD screen and you're gonna also notice a couple new things that have populated over here by the altitude ticker. Now it's gonna look very familiar to you if you fly ILS landings a lot because it is pretty much that. It is the glide slope here on the left and it has your required vertical speed over here on the right. At the top here, in pink is our first flight restriction that we're going to get to. Now, unlike other planes, this doesn't have a fully featured VNAV, so we're going to have to maintain the vertical speed and maintain that uh, glide path. And we're also going to have to make sure that we don't bust these flight restrictions. Okay, so we've got about seven more minutes till we get to the top of descent. And we're just gonna go around the aircraft and make sure that we are set up for everything. Now, the other thing you'll also see over here is I've increased my speed now that we are above 10,000 feet up to 310 knots. 
Now, when we start our VNAV descent, I'm probably going to bring this speed back down to about 290 or 280. Oh, and by the way, if you are enjoying the content here today, a sub to the channel would be sky high. Everybody is wondering what flight plan we're using today and haven't watched our first video in the series, which I highly recommend you do. Links will be down in the description for that video again. Also, the link for the flight plan that you can load into little nav maps will be down there as well. So go check it out and you can fly this exact flight that we're on right now. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to our top of descent right now. We're about three minutes out. So we're gonna start getting this set up so that we can effectively capture this glide slope. First thing I wanna do is come up here to the speed and we're gonna just turn that speed knob back until we get down to about 390. I'm sorry, until we get to about 290. Perfect, now we've got that set up. The next thing I wanna do is go to my altitude bug right up here, and we're going to make the altitude bug say 21,000 feet. Now the plane is not gonna descend or anything, so don't worry about that. It won't actually descend until you tell it how to descend. Now we went over this in the first episode of the series, so again, if you haven't seen it, check it out. So now we've got our 21,000 feet entered. You can already see here our target V speed has changed a little bit. We're just about two minutes away. And basically this little magenta arrow here is where we want to set our vertical speed to to help keep us in line with the glide slope. Now what's going to happen, just like an ILS, is this little magenta arrow at the top is going to start coming down until we get to a right center with the uh, altitude here at 27,000 feet. Once we get to that point, we will then go into our negative vertical speed so that we can maintain that marker right there. Otherwise, what's going to happen is the glide slope is going to keep on going down and we're not going to be going down. So you don't want to miss it. Now if we take a look over here, our time to top of descent is just about a minute and a half. So we've kind of gotten everything set up. The next thing I want to do is come over here to our vertical speed and we're going to hit that vertical speed button. Now when you do, it's going to populate here with zero. So we are now set up to be able to enter a vertical speed by just rotating this dial up or down. Now let's get ready. We're about one minute out now. So basically every time that we're gonna come down to a step down, I'm just gonna set our altitude bug to that flight restriction. This way we never bust that flight restriction. All right, if you take a look over here at our glide slope, the magenta marker is starting to come down centered with our aircraft here at, or centered with the altitude bug here at, uh, or our altitude at 27,000. So once that gets right there in the center, we're then gonna rotate the vertical speed knob downward. Okay, so now you see we are rotating that vertical speed and I'm rotating it all the way down to meet up with that little magenta marker that was right there. Now if we look over here to the right, we can see our vertical deviation. Now that means that we are 76 feet above the glide slope. It gives our vertical speed required, which is 2336, and the target vertical speed of 2300. The vertical speed required is what you need to do now to make sure that we're gonna get to 21,000 feet by the time we have that set in here at T-bar. Again, you can also look here on the MFD screen and you can see the altitude arc and that will also better help you to just give you that redundancy that you know that you're going to be at that altitude by that particular point. 
perfect. Now all we need to do is maintain this descent, and once we get to 21,000 feet, the aircraft will automatically level out for us. So that's how you start the descent. So now we're just going to follow this all the way down until we get to the Ladura transition. The next flight level restriction that we have on here is at the MNARK at 17,843. Now, if you remember, we can't be any lower than 17,000 feet by the time we get to this point. Now, if you look over at our glide slope here, you see we uh, caught up to it. So now I just had to reduce our vertical speed just a bit so that we don't uh, overshoot. Well, we won't overshoot because we'll stop at 21,000, but just to keep us on our glide slope path. Now you can see our next top of descent is gonna start right at the T-bar waypoint. And our next flight restriction is 15,000, so we gotta be quick. Get that down to 15,000 and set your vertical speed. Otherwise, you'll miss it. So you gotta be pretty quick with this. Now you can always go down a little bit faster to catch up to the glide slope like we're doing right now. As you see, we're at 22, 2150, and it only wants us to be at 1630. So we're doing that so that we can catch back up to that glide slope. And once we do, like we are right now, then we can just bring our vertical speed up a bit back up to that 1500 or so. So everything looks pretty good. We are on track inbound to Denver International, everyone. Now, once we do get to the Eldora transition for the approach, we've got a couple other things that we've got to make sure that we're going to pay attention to because we're going to be using the ILS. So we're going to have to switch between our GPS and our NAV-1. So we'll get to that once we get a little bit closer on, on how to do that and effectively capture that ILS glide slope. Because if you don't do it right, you will miss it and it will not capture and you're gonna have to fly it in manually. So it looks like we're still on track down to 15,000 at the BDIVN waypoint. The next one is at Cush and that is a, a hard flight restriction of 14,000 as well. We can't be above or below that once we reach Cush. Now another thing that you can do on this display here, if you come to map settings, you can come to map detail and turn the detail all the way down so you get all this extra stuff off the screen. So that might make it a little bit easier for you when you're trying to fly these approaches when you have multiple waypoints. So we're just gonna do that and turn them off so we can see a little bit better here. And you see our altitude arc is right before the BDVIN and in our flight plan, that is right where we need to be, right at 15,000. So it looks like we're gonna to get to 15,000 right before we reach the waypoint. So that's perfect. That gives us just a little bit of time so that uh, we can then set this to our next flight restriction of 14,000. And again, what I'm going to do is get ready on the altitude knobs. So once the vertical speed drops off, we can now enter the new altitude in there. And you can see the time to top of descent is just about 13 seconds. So we are gonna get our finger ready on the vertical speed button up there. Three, two, one, vertical speed. Now we're gonna set that vertical speed to what they recommend down here, which is right about 1,100 feet per minute. And that's what we're doing. So we are right on glide slope, as you can see. Sun is setting, beautiful outside. Little cold, 
So the next flight restriction here is the Ladura at 13,000 feet. So we're gonna make sure that we get ready on that and time to top of descent is 22 seconds. So our vertical speed dropped off over here. We're gonna set this down to 13,000 feet. We're gonna get our finger ready on the vertical speed button again. We can now hit the vertical speed and we are now on our way to our approach transition, everyone. Hey, everyone, if you haven't seen part one of the video, click up here to move on to the approach. Click down here. Thanks, everybody, for watching.